have your Bibles be turning to the book of John this morning. John chapter number 15. We'll look at the first eight verses in this chapter here. John chapter number 15. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. We'll stand as we honor the Word of God this morning when you find your place. John chapter number 15, verse number 1. Jesus is speaking here. He's doing the talking. He says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Father, I thank you for your word, dear God. And Father, I ask and pray that you would help us today as we try to preach this, this message, Lord, that you would give us understanding, dear God, of your word. And Lord, I just pray that you'd give us the things to say, that those things, dear God, that those in attendance need to hear today, Lord. That, and dear God, I pray that we would be uh, fruit bearers for you, uh, dear God. Father, I ask and pray that if there's one here today that's lost, Lord, that does not know Christ as their Savior, Dear God, it burns my heart, but Lord God, I pray that you'd be merciful to that lost soul. And Father, I pray that if something is said or done here today, dear God, that would open their eyes, and dear God, that you would open their eyes and show them the need for salvation before it's everlasting too late. Dear God, I know it's not going to be long before our Savior returns, and I know that tomorrow is not promised, but dear God, I pray for that person that may be lost in our midst today, Lord. I pray that they'd come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ before it's everlasting too late. Dear God, we'll be sure to uh, glorify your holy name, dear God, and give you all the praise and the honor for our Lord. And dear God, I just ask and pray now that you would just help us to be receptive of your word today, Lord. And just let us be used by you. Help us to be, let us be your mouthpiece today. And dear God, that we could just not say anything out of the way. Not say anything that, not would, that would not be uh, what you would have said here today. But Lord God, uh, everything, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to hold nothing back uh, that you would have said today, dear God. Father, we love you. We thank you for those that come this way today. For these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to ask you a question this morning as to what do you expect to see in a Christian life? What, what, what's something other that you expect to see in the life of a Christian? We know that uh, by the Word of God, and we can read in several places there in the Bible about uh, the Christian life and what we should find there uh, in a Christian's life and the, how they should live and how they should act and what they should do. But Jesus is talking here about abiding in Him. It's about a relationship, basically. Passage of Scripture is what Jesus is speaking of here. And he speaks of, though, whenever we have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, whenever we have a, a good relationship with Him, there is something other, a, a, a byproduct, if you will, called fruit that we're to be bearing. And we, we wonder sometimes why we don't see fruit being born or, or why we don't bear fruit in our life or we see somebody else and we wonder why they're not bearing fruit the way that God would intend for them to bear fruit. We want to see this in our life and we want to see this in the lives of others. 
We want to see growth and we want to see maturity in the lives of others. We want to see production. We want to see service. But we also, we want to see fruit bearing taking place. I'm afraid that whenever we look around us and we look at the people in, in churches today and we look at God's, what we call God's people today and, or God's children today, we, we, we don't see a whole lot of fruit bearing taking place within the church. There's even entire groups of people, entire groups of, of church people uh, that, that makes up a, a local body somewhere that, that we don't see any fruit that is being produced by that local body. And that's a sad thing whenever we don't see the church producing fruit. When the church does not produce fruit, something is dead wrong with that church. Bad wrong, dead wrong, if you will, with that church. But keep in mind who makes up that body. The people make up that body. You and I make up the body. Those that are born again, children of God, we're the ones that make up the body. So if the church is something is, is bad and wrong within the church because it's not bearing fruit, whose fault is that? It certainly is not God's fault. It's our fault. It's our fault. And listen, I'm not trying to defend myself or anything of this nature, but you can't even blame the preacher for it. Because you have the Word of God yourself. Everybody in here has possession of, a, of the Holy Scripture, has, has a possession of the Word of God, just like I have, but yet we want, we've got to blame somebody for our own faults and our own shortcomings. We see that a lot today. It happens even within the church. It's nobody's fault but our own that we are not bearing fruit for Christ. Now you look at your life. Look at your life and, and tell me, or don't tell me, but uh, how much fruit is, do you have bearing in your life for Christ? If somebody looked at you, if you were a tree, could they tell what kind of tree you were by the fruit that you bear? I know there's other ways that we can tell trees apart. You know, pine trees that have needles and cones and the bark's a little crazy and the a lot of them are just straight up and things of that nature. And we know that's different than, say, a, 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 an oak tree or a pecan tree. We can tell them apart. And some trees is hard to tell apart because they, they really look alike. Okay? Some trees really look alike. And you got all the different subspecies of trees and this and the other. And I understand all that. But so what's, what's one of the one things that we determine what kind of a tree that is by the fruit that it bears? We know it's an oak tree because it produces acorns. We know it's a pecan tree because it produces pecans. We know it's a pine tree, it produces pine cones. Okay? We know it's a cherry tree because it produces cherries. We know it's an apple tree, it produces apples. We know it's a, an orange tree because it produces oranges. We know what kind of tree that it is because of the fruit that it bears. And listen, hey, do people know what kind of tree you are for the Lord? Because of the fruit that you bear. Is there any fruit that is being shown that shows up in our life today? Sadly to say, I, I, most people today, there's very little fruit. You, you get one or two pieces of fruit maybe out of, off of that tree. Is fruit bearing important, Brother Child? Is, is it one of those things that we, we, we have to have in our lives? Yeah, well, I believe that we do because the Bible says that we ought to be bearing fruit. Right. As Christians, we ought to be bearing fruit for the Lord, not for ourselves, not for our benefit, not for our reward, but for the glory of God. That's what the Bible says, what the Scripture says in that latter part of that, of that text that we read there in verse number 8, I believe it is. It says, Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear fruit, or much fruit, so, uh, so shall ye be my disciples. Listen, it's for God's glorification that we bear fruit. We want God to get glory by the things that we do in our life, don't we? We're to bear fruit for Him. But it doesn't happen in our lives because of we allow things to, to creep into our lives. And listen, whenever we allow things to creep into our lives, that's it, that hinders our fruit bearing. Now understand that there are some people that, 
that, that, that may not have those things. There are other things that hinders our fruit bearing. As I was riding down the road yesterday, I got to thinking about this a little bit, about the fruit bearing. And, the, and what is it, whenever we see a tree or a bush that, that has fruit on it, whether it be uh, uh, oranges or, or, or kumquats or apples or whatever it might be, whenever we see a tree that has fruit on it, that tells us some things about that tree. Number one, it tells us that fruit bearing is a sign that that tree has life. Hey, listen, as a born-again child of God, whenever we have fruit that we bear in our life, that is a sign that we have life in our existence or in our being. Jesus says that He, uh, he says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. I want you to understand this. The branches is the part of the tree or the part of the, the bush that produces the fruit. The vine does not produce fruit. Okay? You go look at a grapevine. The grapevine does not produce fruit. That vine, that stem, if you will, the main vine, that does not produce the fruit. It's the branches that come off of that vine. All the vine does is give life to the branches. You see? Just like this tree out here. You won't find a pecan growing on the trunk of that tree. That's the vine of that tree. You won't find a, a pecan growing on It's on the branches where the, you'll find the fruit. But whenever we find fruit there, we, there's a, that, that's a sign that there is life in that tree. Whenever we have fruit that we bear in our Christian life, that is a sign that we have life. That's a sign that we're connected to the vine. It's a sign that we have the vine in our life. But not only is that a sign of, uh, of life, uh, bearing fruit, but it is also proof of a healthy branch. Proof of a healthy branch. Now I'll get to the message here in just a moment. But it's important that, you know, you go out and you plant a, a, a garden or you plant a tree, you plant a bush or you plant something other that you're expecting to yield some fruit from. You take care of that thing. You spray it for bugs and worms and you spray it for funguses and things of that nature. You fertilize it. You try to keep that thing healthy. And whenever we see that fruit being born, that means that, hey, we've done our job pretty well. We've taken care of that tree. We've taken care of that, that branch. And it's, it's a healthy branch because it's doing what it is supposed to do. We used to have a plum tree at our house. That it made plums one year. More plums than you could ever imagine. My wife would go out twice a day. Once in the morning. Once in the evening. And she'd gather up every two gallons of plums. In the morning, and two gallons in the evening off of one plum tree. That is a lot of plums. Okay? But something happened. After that, it quit bearing. And I, and I noticed the branches were not healthy. How do I know they were not healthy? Well, first of all, it was being invaded by a fungus. You could look on the branches and you could look on the tree and tell that there was fungus and not so much on the vine or the trunk of the tree, but on the branches is where you would find the fungus. And it would uh, it, it just wrap around that, that branch or that limb on that tree and it would just choke it down and it, it quit bearing fruit. It had been invaded by something that should not be there. Then we noticed that there were ants in and out of the tree. Here again, it was being invaded by something that should not be there. Hey, listen. It was not a healthy branch on that tree. There was no fruit being put, on, uh, put off by that tree because there was not a healthy branch on there. But whenever we see fruit being bare, that is, uh, that is a sign that it is a healthy branch. And listen, whenever we have fruit being born, in our, uh, uh, whenever we bear fruit in our life, that's a sign of a healthy branch. Yes, we got life, we got a healthy branch. 
I want you to understand what it is about what, what it means to have a healthy branch. And we'll get to that here in just a minute. Jesus addresses that in these scripture that we read. Of what a healthy branch is, what a healthy branch does, what can what 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 causes a healthy branch? But not only is, is fruit bearing, not only is it a sign that there is life in the branch, not only is it proof that there that it is a healthy branch, fruit bearing is evidence of growth and or maturity. Yes. <clears throat> you can take a a blueberry bush this big. And it's going to make a few blueberries. Because it's growing. But you take one this big, it ain't going to make no blueberries. As it grows, it may put on two or three or a few. And then as it gets this tall, it may put on some more. I think if you'll let that thing go, it, I think it'll get eight foot tall. That blueberry bush. And then it'll make more blueberries than you can eat. It'll make. Why? Because it is a mature bush. Whenever we bear fruit in our life, we, that, is a, that is evidence that we are growing in the Lord. That is evidence that our spiritual well-being is doing good. It is evidence that we are growing in Christ. Growing in our walk and our service to Him and our relationship with Him. It's getting stronger. That means that we are, have, we got a good relationship with the Lord. A lot of people look at the, the, their life and say, well, you know, it does not bother me that <laughs> it don't bother me that I don't bear any fruit for the Lord. You better check up on your heart then. Check the condition of your heart. If it does not bother you, if you are truly, truly a born again child of God, it ought to bother you. The Holy Spirit ought to be convicting you to death about not producing fruit for the Lord. And if you're not convicted by the Holy Spirit of God for not producing fruit, you might want to check up on the condition of your heart. Why is it? There's three conditions for the child of God to have a fruitful life. Three things. Three things. And Jesus addresses these things in this scripture or this text that we read. Three things. Or conditions of the fruitful life. Number one, there is a cleansing that has to take place. If you want a fruitful life as a born again child of God, there is a cleansing that has to take place in our life. There are things that every person in here has in our life that we must shed and we must get rid of and let God purge us and take those things that are, that are unhealthy toward the bush or toward the tree so that we can bear fruit. There's a cleansing that must take place and every one of us has got something other that we probably need to be doing some cleansing on in our life. We wonder sometimes why we don't bear fruit for God the way that we ought to. It's because there's something that in our life that should not be there. It's because we've not allowed God to cleanse that from us. There's a cleansing that has to take place. Listen. Or purging, if you will. I used to have a grapevine, and every year after it quit making and all the leaves fall off, and during the winter time, I'd go out there and I'd cut that thing back. It'd just be a, a vine or stem, if you will. I'd cut all, pretty much, I'd cut all the branches off that thing nearby. Throw them back to little nodes. And you know what? Next year, but of them new branches come out of there, and they running all over the place, up and down the wire and there. And they were loaded down with grapes again. New branches and new branches on they had grapes all over. <laughs> and it took some purging. Because some of them little here, here's a better example that you might be a little bit more familiar with. How many of y'all know anything about corn? And I don't know what y'all call them. But on a corn stalk, you have ears of corn grow. And a lot of times, you can find on those corn stalks, you can find 
little ears grow. They won't ever get any bigger than this. It's like them little baby coins you find in the grocery store. I reckon that's where they get them from. I don't know. But they won't ever get any bigger than that. There's not good for anything. They won't ever fill out. The kernels won't ever fill out or anything of that nature. But guess what? Them little sucker ears are pulling nutrition and water from those good ears. So what do you do? We went, we go through the cornfield, pull them off. Pull them off, throw them down on the ground. Throw them to the side. Why? Because it was taking away from what from, from the good ears, from the fruit that is being born. It was taking away from we were purging that corn stalk. Because it was those little things were doing harm to the to the fruit. Those little things would hinder that stalk from producing the fruit, the kind of fruit that it could have produced. Listen, there's things that we got to get rid of in our life. There's things that churches must get rid of. Tradition is one of those things. I, listen, I'm not opposed to tradition. I'm not opposed to things being done in a church and this, that, and the other because, you know, that's the way that we've done it. But whenever it comes to being a hindrance to the work of God, then yes, those traditions need to be gone. Anything that would hinder the fruit bearing of the church, anything in your life that would, that would prove to be a hindrance to your fruit bearing for the Lord needs to be gone, needs to be purged. It needs to be cleansed. It might be our attitude. It might be something other that happened 15 or 20 years ago. And we're still holding a grudge for it. You won't ever bear the kind of fruit. You won't ever be the fruit tree that God would have you be while we're trying to hang on to a grudge. It eats you up. That anger at, our, at, at somebody, at our husband, our mama, our daddy, our wife, our children, our, our aunt, our uncle, whoever it might be. That anger that we've been holding on to for so long. It'll eat us up and it won't, it won't allow us to be the kind of fruit bearers that we need to be for the Lord. Folks, there's going to have to take, be some cleansing and some purging that takes place in our life. I'm telling you. I want to see God bless this church in such a way. And I want to see this church here at Sand Hill be a beacon in this community. I'd love to see people drive from hours away just to come to go to church. Because they know that the presence of God is here. They can see the fruit of God being produced here. If that ain't your burden too, if that ain't something other you'd like to see, then I don't know what the matter is with you. It's going to have to have some cleansing that takes place. It's going to have to be a removal of those things that hinder fruit bearing. But not only does it hinder our fruit bearing, it hinders our growth. We're going to have to remove some things. Listen, it might be some fleshly carnal desires in our life that we have to overcome and get rid of. Who knows what it might be? Listen, it... As sad as it is to say, and I know that this is the case, and I, listen, don't get me wrong, I know people have to work, but it might be a job too. What do you mean by that, Brother John? God would allow somebody, well, let me put it like this. <clears throat> you get offered a job, my eyes have been open to this here recently. You get offered a job. It might be a better job. It might be a good job. But if it, it would require you to, to miss church, when you don't really have to have this job, per se, or if it requires you to, if it pulls you away from the things of God, then yes, it, God ain't going to lead you to a job that's going to take you away from Him. Let me put it like that. Okay? I had a, I had a job offer. I turned it down. Yes, I, you know, the church knows that I work and this, that, and the other. I turn it down because it would require me to maybe miss a service or two during the month on a Wednesday night. Now, I know everybody don't come to church on Wednesday night. I sure do wish you would. But I turned it down because there's no way that I believe that God would send me a job that would pull me, the pastor, away from church service. Regardless if it's on a Wednesday or what it is. Okay? Now, 
There's things in this life that we're going to have to purge ourselves of and, and, and get rid of. And it might be those flesh, the carnal desires. I'd have loved to took that job. I know that stuff. It's something I could have done. <laughs> okay? It's something I, 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 I was good at, too. I could have done it. But our priorities, as we grow older in the Lord, our priorities change. Our priorities should be on the things of God, not on the things of this world. One of the conditions of fruit bearing is that there's going to have to be a cleansing that takes place in our life. Another condition of fruit bearing is it's going to have to be an abiding that takes place in our life. What does it mean to abide in the Lord? We see in this text that we read there were several times that the Lord was talking about abiding in me and abiding in Him and abiding in the Father. We see so many different references of abiding, abiding, abiding. What does it mean to abide in Christ? What do you think that it means? It means that we're living for the purpose, for the purpose of glorifying God. Being obedient to His commandment, and we'll get to that here in just a minute, but to abide in Christ means to be in association with Him, to be in relationship with Him, to be close with Him. <coughs> but I'm afraid that our, we have allowed things to take place in our life. We allow our own desires and our own things and our own well, what we choose to do. Listen, to abide in Christ means to be obedient to Christ. We wonder why we can't draw closer to the Lord. <laughs> who, who would love to draw closer to God in their life? In their relationship, who would love to draw closer to the Lord? I would. Well, guess whose fault it is? It's my fault that I'm not any closer. God ain't moved anywhere. He ain't gone off anywhere. He hadn't changed his standards or anything of that nature. It's me. It's John. It's, it's I. I am the one that... And keeping myself from drawing closer to the Lord. It ain't even the devil's fault. It's my fault. If I allow the devil or if I allow the things of this world to keep me away from God or to, to draw me away from God, that's, that's on me. It's my fault. You know why we don't produce fruit for the Lord? Because we really don't want to produce fruit for the Lord. Do you know the thing about fruit? And, 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 and plants. You know one of the things about a, uh, a, you take a plant. Does it just come up from anything? What is it, where does the plant come from? See, see. I, I don't know of any plant that just springs up. Everything comes from a seed. Guess what? What does that seed have to do before it can come up? It's got to die. You cannot take a live seed out there and plant it and it grow. You have to take a dead seed out there, plant it, and let that thing grow. You can pick butter beans out of the garden while they're still green and fresh and got moisture and all that in it. You can plant it out there in the garden. It ain't going to grow. Not until that thing dries up and dies. Then it'll grow. Hey, listen. We're going to have to let some things die in our life now. Uh, this flesh, we're going to have to let this flesh die daily so we can pick up the cross and follow Him, right? right. We want to be fruit bearers for the Lord. We're just not willing to, to put forth the effort and put forth the things that must be done in order for us to bear that kind of fruit. We're not willing. We're not willing to be the fruit bearers that we should be. Listen, we're going to have to abide in Him. He says, abide in me and I in you. That's a promise right there. If we abide in Him, you can rest assured He's going to abide in us. If we abide in Him, you can, you can take it to the bank that He's going to abide in us. He's going to be there for us. I mentioned a while ago, another condition of fruitful life is obedience. And I know we didn't read all these verses. But if you read on in this chapter in verse number 10 and verse number 12, we will find 
we must be obedient. Verse number 10, it says, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. You see, to abide is to obey. His commandments. To abide in His love. It's going to require us to obey His commandments. <clears throat> Whenever we don't obey His commandments, Do you know what that is? Do you know what it is whenever we don't obey God's commands? It's no difference. It is, it is no difference than when a parent tells a child to do this or to do that or to don't do this or to don't do that and that child does it or does not do it. goes right the opposite of what the parent says. Do you, what do we call that? We call it rebellion. <laughs> Whenever we fail to obey God's commands, we are simply rebelling because we know what God's commands say. If we know that sin is sin and yet we do it anyway, that is rebellion. Plain and simple. You will not bear fruit for God. Whenever we are rebellious. We're not abide, abiding in Him if we're not obeying Him. We're not purging, allowing Him to purge us. We're not going to bear the fruit that we ought to be bearing. How many of you, how many of you would be willing to be a fruit bearer for the Lord? How many of you would be willing to be a fruit bearer? See, that's, the, that, that's probably one of the biggest hindrances is our own will. What we want. Are we really willing to pay the cost to be a fruit bearer? It saddens me to think that there are people in this world that are the best to belong to God, and I'm not saying that they don't belong to God, but they profess to belong or to be a child of God. But they're not willing to do anything for God. They're not willing to be a fruit bearer for Him. Hey, listen, I understand. There's some people that's never grown to the point of producing fruit, but still little baby trees. Still in the baby bushes, if you will. They don't, they're not old enough to produce fruit. Well, Brother John, they may be 50 years old. They may be 60 years old. But they may have been saved for 40, 50 years too. But that don't mean they grow none. They still babes in Christ. What about us today? Are we willing to be fruit bearers? Are we, are we willing to grow in God so that we can be fruit bearers for Him? In our life and with our life. Brother Kendall, if you and Miss Jody will come as we get ready for an invitation of him this morning. I do not know where you stand in your life as far as bearing fruit. I can only speak for myself. And I do know this. I don't bear the, the amount of fruit that I am capable of bearing. Are you bearing the amount of fruit that you're capable of bearing in your life? If not, we ought to be down here at the altar. We ought to be down here at the altar, doing business with God, taking care of, letting Him purge us, letting, uh, uh, getting us to abide in Him and be obedient to Him. Listen, that's what it's going to take. It's going to take a cleansing and abiding and, a, and a, uh, obedience in our life. We want to be a fruit bearer. Who is willing to be a fruit bearer? For the Lord. As we get ready for an invitation of him this morning, maybe you're here today and you said, you know what? My life does not bear any fruit for God. My life does not produce any fruit for the Lord. You know, one of the one, before you could ever
And we mentioned this before you can ever bear fruit, you must abide in Him. That's what He says, what Jesus said in that scripture. You have to abide in Him. Listen, the branch cannot produce fruit on its own, it has to be in connection with the vine. That's the reason He says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. We must have Him in our life if we're going to produce any fruit. For him. There might be somebody here today that's not abiding in him. Maybe the reason they're not bearing fruit from the Lord. Maybe God has shown you that, hey, listen, you're not one of my branches. You're not one of my branches. It's the reason you're not bearing fruit from me. Maybe you are one of his branches, but you're not bearing fruit because of something other else in your life, whatever it might be. Whatever it is today, be obedient to God today.